Hello everyone and welcome to your glass node on chain 101 where today we're going to be looking at the realized cap hodl waves. Now these are a really really powerful metric that I put into the supply dynamics toolkit. So this is a, a tool that we can really use to see the ownership structure of Bitcoin, how different people whether they're longer term or shorter term investors are owning those coins, what's the balance of wealth in the network and overall we can use it to actually establish a great number of insights and you'll see that I actually use this metric personally on, uh, on a very regular basis. So let's get started. So the realized cap hollow waves are one of the most powerful metrics and that you can actually achieve quite a bit of insight with them. You can look at everything from what the long-term hold of Bitcoin uh, investors are doing. You can look at it in terms of the shorter term investors and what their overall sentiment is and how wealth is moving between those two cohorts. And we're also going to look at something called coin maturation, which is trying to track how old these coins are in the overall supply and how it actually moves through the Bitcoin network. And what does that tell us about the aggregate sentiment of the system? So what we're going to do is to explore a bit of an overview of what the realized cap hodl waves are, how they actually differ to the standard hodl wave metric. And we'll also then discuss this kind of long-term to short-term, short-term to long-term. What, what are we actually looking for when we analyze the changes in these various realized cap hodl wave bands? So just before we get started, please do give this channel a uh, subscribe and a like and uh, let us know if you're enjoying this content in the comments. Um, if there's anything that's unclear, do let me know. This is one of my personal favorite metrics. You'll see it show up quite a bit in the week on chain uh, analysis. It, it's one of these tools that gives us so much insight for just a single metric. So it is kind of one of those foundational metrics that I certainly use. So hopefully this provides a bit of insight into how you can start using it in your analysis. So here we are in Glassnode Studio, we're looking at the realized cap hodl waves. Now, let's just start by understanding how this particular metric differs to the standard hodl waves, which you may have seen. So on the left-hand axis, which is what's mapping onto the color bands, you can see that we're going from zero to 100%. Now on the standard hodl waves, that's as a proportion of the BTC supply. So as you can imagine, Satoshi's coins, which is around a million BTC, in terms of that relative to the 18.9 that have been mined, it's a fairly substantial chunk. Now, the challenge is that Satoshi's coins have no price. When they were mined, there was no value for Bitcoin. So therefore, how much economic weight do they really carry? And the answer is actually not a great deal. Now, if they were spent and revalued at today's prices, of course, they would come back to life and they would have a great economic value, but they would no longer be 10-year-old plus coins, which we have in the purple band here. They would become these 24-hour coins, which is the dark red. So what you'll see is that the hollow wave bands go from red all the way up to these dark greens and purples, which are the older coins, whereas the warmer colors are younger. So on that same case study as Satoshi, you can see that 10-year-old coins, which there are many of them, there's lots of lost unspent miner coins, there's Satoshi's coins, there's millions of coins that are over 10 years old that simply haven't moved, and yet they don't carry much economic weight. So in the standard hollow wave bands, you will see a large purple blocks at the top here, which is showing in terms of BTC supply that Satoshi's coins are quite significant. However, in terms of the amount of value that they stored, in terms of the price when they were mined or the price when a coin was last spent on chain, that's what the realized cap hollow wave is doing. It's capturing the USD denominated wealth that is stored in those particular coins. So when we actually take that concept, we're looking at between zero and 100% of the overall network, what proportion of the total supply in terms of the wealth that is stored in those coins falls into each age bracket. So it's a bit more of the USD denominated rather than the BTC denominated, which is the standard hollow waves. So in terms of some very big picture patterns, what we can see is that there's these clear red spikes where we get this explosion of these younger coins. It ages up from one day through to one week, one month, three months. Generally speaking, when we're talking about up to about six months, that's that long-term holder type status. Generally, these warmer colors, what I will refer to as young coins. And you can see that they generally explode in population. There's more wealth, 65, 70%, sometimes 80% of the total wealth in Bitcoin is held by these younger coins. And note that these also happen during bullish markets. And that makes sense because what we're seeing is the older hands, people who bought in the previous bear cycle, they start spending and liquidating. So stronger hands are taking profits, leaving the network, 
selling their coins to somebody who's only just come into the system. And when we have an overabundance of these young coins, it also translates to a large number of short-term holders, more inexperienced investors, more people who've come in because they saw Bitcoin on the news rather than because they've been here for multiple years and they've experienced the volatility firsthand. So these explosions and these red colors that we see in bull markets is that transfer of wealth. We're seeing that overall coins are transferring from old strong hands to more or less newer, weaker hands. Now, as you can expect, we see the exact opposite during the bear market. Here's our 2018 and 19 bear, where we have a lot more of these yellow colors, even getting into the greens, which are one to two, two to three years old. We can see it coming in through 2015, 16, and we see these start to decline only as we get towards the top of the bull. So this is the other side of the equation where during bearish markets where prices are correcting and investors start to see value, particularly those investors who typically sold the top and are now stepping back in to accumulate cheaper coins with expectations that there will be another bull market down the road. Now, a really powerful way to analyze these, and the way that I normally do it, is thinking about it in terms of that long-term, short-term. And we're going to use six months as that cutoff period. So the first thing I want to do is actually focus on the long-term investors, because really these are the these are the folks who generally set the pace and the tone of the Bitcoin market. They're the ones with that long-term time horizon, and they generate the supply squeeze that then brings in the next uh, group of people who see it on the news, they see price going up, and that really is what generates the excitement in many instances. So what I've done, I've turned off the legend items underneath six months. So we're only looking at coins that are six months all the way up to 10 years. And what you can really see is that there's about four bands that stand out, six to 12 months, um, uh, one year to two year, two year to three year, and then three year to five year in this darker green color. There are the other bands in there, but they represent such a small amount because seven to 10 years ago, Bitcoin had such little value that relative to today's prices, they don't represent a large economic wealth. Now, we can clearly see that these start to really expand during the bear. You can see that, and you can see the transition for the six month period, then the six to 12 months takes over in terms of dominance. And as you would expect, after 12 months' time, the, the two to three years starts to take over. So we're actually seeing this coin migration. Coins are being purchased at the first phase of this bull. They're being hodled for six months, which creates this explosion in this yellow band, six to 12 months. So six months after the coins are accumulated, we see an expansion. Now we see the six to 12 months start to decline, and this is because they're maturing into, it's almost being overtaken by the one to two year. So we're seeing this maturation of wealth from six to 12 months crossing over that 12 month boundary into the one to two year band. And then as you would expect, 12 months later, those 12 month old coins go to 12 month and one day and transition into the two to three year band. Now note that generally speaking, we get these peaks in these older coins that normally peaks out around the end of the bear. You can see in 2015, we're around the end of the bear. We can see in the 2018-19 bear market, we peaked out at that point as well. We then had our 2019 rally and note that we had a little bit of distribution. So the reason that I like to look at these in terms of old and young is because we know we've got all of the old coins shown here. So that means that when the old coins are declining, there's only one place that they can be going, and that is that they're being spent. So these are one-year-old and two-year-old coins that are being spent and therefore converting into young coins. Conversely, when we go and look at the short term, the only way that they can increase or decrease is because there's coins coming out of the long-term supply. So we can almost look at these in terms of it must be one or the other. That's a good way to think about this when you're comparing long and short term. So as we had the 2019 rally, note that during that market, we get this expenditure and we see this decline in the hollow wave bands. This is actual spending. And another key takeaway from this is that this coin maturation process that we see during bear markets, it takes time. A coin can only show up in the six month ban, once it's been dormant for six months. So you can see that there's actually a time lag between when the coin is purchased and when it shows up in the band. So aging, the maturation process takes time and the minimum amount of time is the lower bound of each of these brackets. In order to move into a one to two year old coin, it must be dormant for one year. So it takes a little bit of nuance to understand the aging process. 
Now, the opposite is true for spending. 2019 is a good example. When we have spending, it is instantaneous. The coin has gone from one year old immediately to 24 hours. It's an instantaneous process. We can see it here again in the 2020 and 21 bull market. Note how rapidly all of these older coins are being spent and that by definition means that lots and lots of that supply, the wealth is being transferred to new coin buyers. They're less experienced. They've come in because of the news and the hype. And note that the spending typically happens all the way to the market top. Note here in 2017, we had the absolute bottom in old coins, which the converse of that means the maximum amount of coins in the young bands, the most number of new investors at the top. Same here in 2013. At the top, we have the maximum number of new buyers and the minimum number of old buyers. So this is that transfer of wealth that I was referring to, where we actually see old hands selling to weak hands, and thus that puts the market top in. And almost like clockwork, after the top, we start to see that trend reverse, and we move back into this, bull, this bear market accumulation where the long-term, more patient investors slowly stack sats, pull coins off the market, and that starts to create a supply squeeze in the longer term. So in our current market structure, you can see we've had our first six, uh, a six to 12 month impulse, and that's starting to fall off much the same way as we saw near the end of the 2018 bear and near the end of the 2015 bear, where we start to see it transition into the one to two year, this yellow colored band. And you can see it's starting to actually bail out at this point in time. So that's showing that we're getting coins crossing at a great rate from that six to 12 into the one year to two year uh, band. And we can also see that we've got a level around 50% of the wealth in Bitcoin is currently held by these older coins, these longer term holders. And it's not too dissimilar to what we've seen in previous bears, but it also means that we may well have a little bit more time. You can see that these tend to take some time to play out. So there may well still be time on the horizon. So now we're actually gonna flip this over and look at our short term holder supply. So let's pull all of these older coins off. We'll turn our legend items off and look at only coins that are younger than six months. So this is essentially showing the other side of the equation. These are people who've come in more recently and purchased. Now remember that within these bands, both in long and short term, there's always going to be people who panic sell, panic buy. It's never a perfect fit. But what we're looking at is the general trend. What is the balance of wealth in the network? So whereas we saw large explosions and an increase in the old supply during bears, note that we have the absolute minimum of young coins during the bears. So what's happening here is all of the speculators who come in during the bull market where we get these large peaks in these young coins, it's showing that overall the wealth is being transferred to newer investors. Look at the 2017 top. Over 90% of the wealth was held by short-term holders. These people have a higher cost basis. They're more sensitive to price. When we get some kind of downside volatility, they start selling and they capitulate and exit the system. So after these large increases in these young coins, the maximum amount of wealth is held by these newer investors. The market collapses under them. They're the most likely to sell. And once they've sold, in many instances, they leave. They walk away from the market. And the only people who are left are the longer term investors who are willing to buy in patience and actually stick it out through the bear market and accumulate those coins. So this decline that we see in these younger coin bands is actually showing that coins are being spent by speculators, spent by people who have a high time preference. And then those more patient investors are buying, taking them off the market, sticking them into cold storage. They come back the next month, they buy again, they take the coins off the market, they stick them into cold storage. And simultaneously, we have fewer newer investors coming in. So we, we're seeing that the decline in these young coin bands typically bottoms out at and around the lows of a bear market. And this is essentially showing that the maximum amount of people have been flushed out of the system. And it's really a balance of patience. We have more long-term investors with a long time horizon left in the market. Now note that 2019, we had this explosion. Remember, the, the rise in sh young coins is going to be instantaneous because when a coin that's one year old is spent, it immediately becomes a 24 hour and then it starts maturing through these different coin bands. So you can see that 2019, we actually can see sell side pressure. When you see a rising of these younger coins, it's showing that there is sell side pressure going on. When you see a decline in young coins, it's showing that there is accumulation going on on net. So we can kind of balance out whether we're seeing buy side or sell side pressure. 
Now in our current market, note that we actually peaked out around January. We had this large explosion of these younger coins. These were old hands selling to new buyers. And then we started to peak out as we got to May. So May really to me represents the start of this bear market when we actually saw the flush out of investors and we can see this in terms of the young coin supply starting to really decline. Now it has started to reach a bit of a minima, right? It's starting to get down to a relatively low level, but note down at the bottom here, let's actually just zoom into the last five years so we can really look at this, uh, this current market structure. Note how we have some swelling going on of these younger coin bands. Now, this is showing us that there has been some expenditure of late, and it's starting to move up the maturation stack. So it's gone from one day to one week, and it's now in that one month to three month old band. So it's starting to swell up higher, and this really represents buyers throughout this recent correction. We're seeing a lot of those coins that were accumulated being held onto. So what we really want to pay attention to in the coming weeks is do we start to see these very, very young bands, these 24 hours and these one week old coins, does that start to swell up again? And is that swelling up as a result of old coins being spent? So if we're seeing this trading sideways, the overall collection of all of these uh, younger coins, when this trades sideways, it means that most of the spending is going on. It's kind of what we would call churn. It's all happening. It's a, a one week old coin being spent to a one day, a three month old coin being spent to a one day. So when this overall aggregate uh, hodl wave band is trading sideways, it signals churn. Now, when it starts climbing, the only way that this can climb is by eating into the older coins. It means old coins are being spent. So this is really where we have to look at the trend of this. It, when we're seeing a decline in young coins, it's accumulation. The population of old coins is by definition growing because overall the young coins are declining. When we're seeing it trading sideways, it means that there's more churn going on inside the younger coins. And overall, it's showing that it's kind of a balance or some kind of equilibrium. We typically see this during the first phase of a bull or the late stage of a bear. It's typically when we're in that reaccumulation period and most of the churn is just kind of day-to-day -day spending. And then when we see an uptrend in our younger coins, it's showing that the only way that can happen is by spending by those older coin brackets. And we can actually see the maturation, how it goes from dark red to lighter red to orange, all the way through to yellow. It's showing that migration of coins through the stack. And once we hit that peak, it starts to move back into accumulation. So that's really how I use the HODL waves to kind of map out the overall wealth in the system. I certainly would recommend looking at things from the long term and the short term. You really want to pay attention to the trend and the change in trend, that uptrend versus downtrend. And just be aware that when you have young coins that are coming up in value, it means that it has to be coming out of the older coins. And conversely, when the young coins are declining, it must be because the older coins are essentially growing in population. And that shows a transition of wealth from the newer buyers back to the stronger hands, typical of bear markets. So thanks for tuning in for this session. Hopefully you found it useful. As you can see, the Realize Cap Hodl Waves are a very, very powerful tool. There's a huge amount of insight you can pull from one simple metric. And remember that you can actually look at any single group of those, uh, those different legend items and age bands to understand how coins are moving through the system. So what's really important is to ask yourself when a particular age band is increasing, how does that happen? Where do the coins come from? Is it because coins are being spent, which is instantaneous? Is it because coins are maturing up from six months to six months and one day and moving up into a more senior band? Typically, it requires looking at a couple of age bands in combination. And the easiest way to look at this, in my view, is to look at it from the long term and the short term using that six month cutoff as the approximate level where you start looking at the different behaviors. And as you become more experienced, you can play around with you know, finer grained and looking at individual bands. So hopefully that was useful. Please do give us a share and a subscribe. It really does help the channel. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers.